since the arrest of Brian Koberger on December 30th, 2022. People interested in the case and true crime sleuths alike have been scrambling around for information about the person himself. Those who have known Brian Koberger throughout the years have made statements and have given reports to news outlets, media sources, and have just posted on their own personal so social media pages. It seems at this time, we've learned just about all we can about Brian Koberger without learning any more from the people who conducted the investigations themselves. Many true crime sleuths and the public in general are waiting for the release of the PCA or probable cause affidavit. But how likely is it that we will be privy to all of the information contained within the probable cause affidavit shortly after Brian Kohlberger is extradited to Idaho. Questions the public would like to know the answer to include whether the suspect knew the victims and to what his alleged motive might have been and what finally prompted his arrest. The killings shook the college town of Moscow, Idaho, which hadn't seen a murder in seven years, as some in the community grew frustrated with limited information authorities shared as their investigation developed. That was partly due to state law, which limits what information authorities can release before the suspect makes an initial appearance in court. In this case, of course, it would be in Idaho. The document containing much of the information the public wants to know can be found in the all-important probable cause affidavit, or PCA, the legal document, document used to justify Koberger's arrest and to obtain a warrant. The document will remain sealed until he returns to Idaho, where he faces four counts of first-degree murder as well as a felony burglary charge per Latta County, Idaho, prosecutors. A legal analyst and defense attorney, Joey Jackson, told CNN that document will tell us an awful lot. It will speak to the issue of probable cause, why he is under arrest, what is the justification for holding him and for going after him from a prosecution perspective. So we know that the PCA or probable cause affidavit will remain sealed at least until Koberger's hearing in Idaho. And the question has been widely posed, is it possible that the document will remain sealed beyond his initial Idaho hearing, as it was in the Delphi case, as it pertained to suspect Richard Allen's arrest? This is a somewhat layered legal question, so I consulted an attorney, Leonard Smith, former district attorney in the state of New York, to help bring some clarity to the issue. He confirmed that the question regarding whether or not the PCA will potentially remain sealed beyond the initial Idaho hearing is largely a matter that is at the state's discretion. He explains that a judge has a discretion to keep the probable cause affidavit sealed or release the probable cause affidavit and redact it or release it in its entirety. Now, a difference between Idaho law and Indiana law, where the Delphi case happened procedurally, is that Idaho is an open record state. That is why several YouTube channels have been able to ask for under FOIA Act requests and receive body cam footage from police officers having anything to do with the suspect or with the property at which the four victims resided. Since Idaho is an open records state, it is more unlikely that the PCA will remain sealed as it was for a short period of time after the initial hearing of Richard Allen in Indiana it would have to entail that the probable cause affidavit also named another suspect aside from Brian Kohlberg for it to be legally sealed as a continuance by a judge. We do know that Chief James Fry has said since the arrest of Brian Kohlberger 
that it is likely that Koberger acted alone, which leads us to believe and make a reasonable conclusion that the probable cause affidavit does not name any other parties in addition to Brian Koberger. Since it is likely that the probable cause affidavit will be unsealed and will be available to us as a matter of public open record, what is this document going to tell us? It might tell us the suspect's alleged motive. It might give us information as to whether or not he knew the victims prior to committing this crime. It might contain information that gives us an indication if he actually targeted anybody living in the home at 1122 King Road or if this was more just a random act. It could give us information regarding the weapon used, if the weapon had been found, if they learned any more information about the means, method, or mode of the crime that he committed. It will give us information for sure as to what indicated Brian Koberger was the suspect and what led authorities to go to a judge requesting a warrant for his arrest where the judge clearly granted that warrant that eventually led to Brian Koberger's arrest. So all of us who have been following the case are eagerly awaiting the unsealing of the probable cause affidavit. We must always keep in mind the one thing that is of the greatest importance in discussing this case at all is that we find justice for Maddie, Kelly, Ethan, and Zana, and peace for their families. Um, and then what was the uh, Don't forget to move the, the carbonara. The carbonara. Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it Excellent. for you. Excellent. And then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like you do not quite have enough points yet. Oh, that's okay. That's good. Okay. Um, Ten dollars. multiple stab wounds. Some had defensive wounds, showing they fought with the attacker, and there was no sexual assault. County Coroner Kathy Mabbott is describing the murders as personal. 